the words, upon the feelings that we bestow this evening. And we are here in great numbers with love and with presence for you. So share with us by giving your presence of the emotions. And maintaining that place of balance and harmony. This is the area I would like to address this evening. This is the area I will be assisting you each with in my discourse and in my personal attention. You would like me to give you special attention to help you. You may ask in within yourself, and I will do what I can to assist you. I will take full uh, advantage of this opportunity, as there are so many who come through to speak with you. When my turn comes around, I am longing to give you the maximum experience that I can. The maximum experience that you are open to receive, that you are willing to accept. Or this is an active participation that we are engaged in here, you see. It is an active participation in your individual lives with your teachers and guides. It is always necessary for your free will and your attention to be given, for your requests to be made that we might come and serve you. And on these occasions it is no different. So again, as the Lord Sananda is so fond of saying, ask and you shall receive. I think you will find that this rule applies at every level of consciousness. It is not simply for mortal beings to ask in their uh, attempts at uh, their ascension and their experience of the divine, but it is also for ascended beings, angels, and the many, many of the hierarchy that serve. And as you uh, proceed in your growth, you get better at asking, and so better at receiving. So relax yourselves, my friends. And enjoy the beauty that you are within yourselves, the beauty that already exists, the beauty that attracts us and allows us to connect with you, to plug in and to energize your beauty, to energize you to that which is already within you.
it is very challenging, as you all know, to exist in this limited reality at this time on this planet where there is so much confusion and so much density. The world uh, trembles on the brink of war. Earth changes are coming more and more into the forefront of your consciousness. And in fact, the activities of the secret government are coming more into your awareness as well. Not to mention the fact that uh, human beings are all processing and releasing at this time. It makes for a rather stimulating environment, does it not? If you were perhaps bored in your life at uh, some point, I don't think you will be for long. In fact, it becomes quite stimulating and exciting even to mm, carry on from day to day to see what is awaiting you around the next corner of your spiritual adventure, to see what new challenges present themselves to you. It is truly an, an exciting time for you, exciting being the positive outlook, the negative being stressful. So depending upon your outlook, you can be either having an exciting time or a stressful time. So what I am here to uh, assist you in this evening is finding the solid ground whereon you can stand, where you can exist upon a balanced place of mm, safety and security, <coughs> stability and positivity to it help you to go through all of these transformations that you are going through without getting caught up in the group consciousness that is prevalent upon the planet at this time without getting caught up in mm. others' emotional processes. There is a graceful way to exist in the midst of change. And there is a chaotic way to exist. The way to exist in chaos is to be attached to your mind, to your thoughts, your emotions and to the same that you experience coming to you from without from other beings attachment to the mental and emotional processes of the world at this time creates an experience of chaos and confusion it always has yet it is much more obvious at this time attachment to the inner peace and harmony that exists within you, within your own breath, within your being, detaches you from these external stimulations. And this is the source of grace and beauty, the source of purity and the feeling of effortlessness as you flow through your life. All of these extremes are available to you now. In fact, I'm sure you are experiencing a little bit of all of them. It is our endeavor to move you more into harmony, more into peace, more onto that solid ground. So that you can have a more enjoyable time and truly attain to the mm, self-mastery and enlightenment that is yours for the asking. The end result of this process is already understood by us and by you, I believe. The end result of all of this transformation is going to be extremely beautiful. It is going to be a perfected planet and perfected beings. There is little you can do 
by your own mm, efforts to either uh, assist or to mm, detract from the overall outcome. What we are talking about here is your experience and the extent that you can enjoy this process and benefit from it in a graceful and beautiful way. <coughs> so you are all headed for this enlightenment. You have attained much already in your many earth lifetimes. You could say this is the lifetime that puts the icing on the cake. You have attained much and, and knowing spirit, knowing the endless, boundless love that is present, within the Father's heart for us. You also know that there is always more that can be experienced. There is always more joy and more depth. So on one hand, there is an aspect of the planet which is undergoing transformation and apparent uh, chaos, it is moving towards dissolution. And on the other hand, there is the aspect that is moving towards transformation and ascension. Let's say that you were walking along the shore with a friend or with someone that you uh, didn't even know. Perhaps that would be a better analogy. You were walking along the shore of uh, the ocean and you were mm, alongside a cliff. The ocean was rather rough and you were observing the beautiful sunset. When one of your companions fell off the cliff into the water and was mm, splashing about in the water buffeted by the waves and being carried out into the ocean by the current. At that point in time, your choice is what can you do to assist? There may be an immediate response in your uh, emotional body, in your emotional self, to assist by jumping in with that person and attempting to save them. In which case you would have two bodies splashing about being carried out to sea. Not a very good scenario. And uh, another way is to uh, remain on the solid ground yourself and to throw them a line and to pull them in. Or to extend a pole or something of this nature. in this way would be your only chance of assisting them. And so it is in your lives at this time there is this tendency towards dissolution in the world, in the emotional world that surrounds you, in the world of men. And there are many who have fallen off the cliff and are drifting about in the ocean, heading out to sea, in the sea of illusion. And you are standing on solid ground, observing all of this. And it is often tempting for you to join the crowd in a way. Perhaps you feel cold-hearted in not jumping in with them. Perhaps you feel you are not being compassionate. But I say to you, it is vitally important that you, who are the wise beings of this earth, believe it or not, you are the wise being, it is vitally important that you stand on solid ground. Someone needs to be there to throw the line out to assist. And it is for you to be detached and to know that you are doing all you can and that it does not avail the situation for you yourself to become lost or you yourself to drift out into the ocean of illusion.
so it is for you to maintain the solid ground, the balanced, harmonious, peaceful, positive, spiritually aware, solid ground. As an example for others and as a benefit to your own growth and your own harmony, and to save yourself from a lot of the difficulties. and to stay dry. So this is your goal with regards to what we are speaking of. The solid ground being that love and that peace and light that is within you, that solid awareness of spirit, that solid connection with the divinity that you are, and the awareness of your higher self, your I am presence, your God self, however you wish to label it. This is the challenge that is before you and mm, this is the mm, most difficult thing, I think, for many of you to maintain that state of equilibrium, that positive, harmonious balance. Now I have now having said this, I will say that this is your goal. Like all goals, it is not going to be achieved 100% of the time. Let me say that in theory, it is entirely possible for each of you to maintain a positive, harmonious, beautiful experience in every moment of your life. In practice, it is extremely difficult given the fact that you are going through so much transformation and processing of your emotions, so much being cleared, given the fact that you are surrounded by a world that is diving off the cliff at every opportunity. So what are you to do? Well, first of all, know that you are going to get a little bit wet probably. And you have all gotten wet enough times to understand what I am speaking of. You have gotten yourselves in situations of feeling imbalanced or in negativity or fear or any of the emotions that are unpleasant, into states of attachment over aspects of material existence, things that you later might realize were very unimportant but which nevertheless fascinated you and attracted you sufficiently to pull you off your center, pull you off that solid ground. So you know what I am speaking of here. And it's a tricky business, you see. For you have within yourselves a goal, you have an awareness of what it feels like to maintain that positive clarity, that solidness, and you also have mm, the experience of, of falling in the water. And there is a tendency amongst all of you, I think, that when you fall in the water, you tend to splash about a bit, and then as you climb out, you might feel a little self-critical or a self-judgmental, which further acts to uh, cause you to slip back into the water once more and feel unworthy to be on the solid ground. There are many tricks that your mind and your emotions will attempt to play to keep you attached to limited reality. It is for you to do your best to flow with these changes as they occur in a way that is less attached, in a way that is more as an observer. Of course, everyone here has gotten wet and will continue to get wet from time to time. It is inevitable, I would say. And when you find yourself getting off balance, I suggest you attempt as best you can to locate within yourself 
self-love, to locate within yourself a sense of humor, and simply to ride out the process that you have created, created for yourself until you again attain to that balance. And to do all of this without self-criticism or judgment, to do all of this in a way that is in itself surrendered to the process and detached. This is your most direct path towards maintaining that balance and harmony. You see, over-attachment to any extreme will cause you to mm -hmm. lose your balance. You could be over-attached to uh, high spiritual states of consciousness, or you could be over-attached to mm, any number of uh, wet experiences, to anger and fear, any other uh, dense emotions. And your attachment to either of these extremes causes your fascination with them to the point that you tend to attract Mm, a rather a seesaw experience in your lives. You might go from one extreme to the other. And there is always a certain amount of seesawing in life because you are in the third dimensional reality. You are always going to experience highs and lows, but these highs and lows can be tempered by your awareness, by your detachment, by your outlook and contact with the solid ground within you, which is the fulcrum point of the seesaw, and it can be much less and it can be much more enjoyable, so that you can actually have the experience of being able to laugh at the follies of third dimensional reality from a place of detachment, from a place of self-love. It is most difficult to detach from your own egos. This is the part of you that continues to uh, keep you absorbed with external realities and the part of you which tries to define who you truly are based upon external realities. So that if you fall in the water, your ego will tell you, oh, you're a terrible person, you're all wet here, look, you're surrounded by all this cold, you're angry energy. What a terrible person. Or if you attain to a state of beautiful, transcendent meditation, your ego will come in and say, oh, look, what a wonderful person you are. You are truly an angelic being. You are high above all of the mass of humanity. You see the ego will attach and attract itself to whatever the experience is externally or internally. It does this to ensure its own survival. You could say as long as you are experiencing the ups and downs and the uh, intensities of life, uh, the ego knows that it is alive. When you are on the solid ground in that perfect peace and harmony, the ego does not feel so much friction in life and it tends to be mm, a little concerned that it is dying, that it is not necessary. For the ego exists to protect you from the extremes. It will continue to attract you to the extremes in order to convince you that it is necessary for your survival to maintain a good solid ego. In fact, it is time for you to transcend all of that in your consciousness. Even while it is falling away, you can have a more detached experience of it. This will greatly accelerate your process, greatly accelerate your progress and the amount of grace that you feel within that progress, within that transformation.
if you will look closely enough within any experience <coughs> along the spectrum, <coughs> you can experience mm, the opposite of that. Within joy, there is also existing the seeds of sorrow. And within sorrow are planted the seeds of joy. Speaking are the seeds of dry throat. <clears throat> Many limitations in the physical form, yes. And yet you chose to have this form. You chose to have this form and you chose to have every experience that you have had in this form. It will all serve you well. It has served you well. Look at how far you have come. Even while you have perhaps been judging and criticizing yourselves for falling into the water countless times, look at the state that you have arrived at, the awareness that you have achieved, the light that is within you that is so beautiful, your beautiful contact with the ascended beings. Very few on this earth have this connection with us at this time. Sad to say, you are very fortunate. In fact, gratitude towards your beautiful attainments towards all that is good in your life, towards your very life itself, acts to greatly enhance your balance and your stability. Or even in the midst of change and chaos, you can find something to be grateful for. You can find a reason to be happy. Many reasons. So this gratitude, coupled with a, an excellent sense of humor, will assist in detaching you from your slippery and wet adventures, will assist you to standing on that solid ground so that you can be there to receive the maximum amount of spiritual presence, so that you can be there to achieve the maximum service that you can perform while you are here. You are all here to serve. It is a service that you took to be here. And as you awaken to who you truly are, service becomes more and more important to you. Your driving force, inevitably. Inevitably, what other reason could you have for allowing yourself to enter this limited third dimensional reality. I don't think you came here for the beautiful weather to experience the wonderful sights and sounds of war and suffering. No, you came here to serve. And as you unfold your awareness and your consciousness, you will find this growing within you also. This awareness of that you are serving. With every conscious breath you take, you are serving humanity and those around you. So in this time, there is a great need for those human beings to be standing on solid ground, to be somewhat resilient to the changes around their bodies and their emotional states and the state of the world in general. There is a great need for grounded, enlightened beings. 
and there is also a great deal of assistance coming your way to assist you in maintaining this balance. You could say that by maintaining this balance, you are creating and planting the seeds for future balance and harmony. And by creating or indulging an imbalance in your lives, you are sowing the seeds for this as well. This is why self-mastery is so important. Self-mastery being your refusal to indulge in negativities. This is not to say that you will not experience negativity, but indulgence in them is another story. And a master is one who has mastered their own consciousness, mastered their own awareness, and can stand on that solid ground in the midst of change and never loses their footing. For when you are in that position, you can assist others. If someone falls beside you, you can pick them up. If someone is in the water, you can throw them a line. And as the agents of the Creator upon this world, you are the ones who have the hands and the feet and the voices. You are the ones who have capacity to serve in ways that we do not. And it is necessary for the completion of the picture to have some solid beings on the surface of the planet as well as in the higher dimensions. This has been understood since the beginning and this was why it was given that volunteers should come to Earth. I assure you it was not mm, some sort of strange experiment. Let's throw these star seeds on this mm, third dimensional planet and see what happens to them. No, there was a divine plan involved in this. And you yourselves understood the plan, understood at least to a certain extent the ramifications of it, and especially understood the importance of it. And the desire within you to serve was so strong. So it is time for you to again acknowledge this. Acknowledge that solidity that strength within you that qualified you for this adventure in the first place. And tap into that potential for strength and clarity in your self-mastery so that you can stay on the solid ground. in that beautiful state of balance and harmony, experiencing the love that is there and showering it from your hearts. I will tell you a secret, what you look like to us. When you are in a state of balance and peace, when you are in a conscious state, you are very radiant beings. We can pick you out in a crowd at any distance. You are the ones with a beautiful radiation of light coming from your hearts in all directions, touching all beings. Most of the time you are not conscious of this, but nevertheless it is occurring. And then there are times when you are off balance and engaged in your extremes of experience when you are still more radiant than many, but 
not as nearly as radiant as you once were. Your light is a little bit dimmer. So we view you as, mm, you might say, a flickering light on the beautiful Christmas tree of planet Earth. And you are learning to stay lit mm, more and more often. You are not going out quite as much as you used to. But nevertheless, it is a rather flickering affair, quite brilliant to behold. And more are flickering on all the time, and more that have been on for some time are maintaining their brightness with our assistance. You didn't know you were a bunch of light bulbs, did you? <laughs> you are light bulbs, divine light bulbs. You radiate that light that cannot be seen by mortal eyes, can only be seen within by beings who have opened their third eye, their spiritual eye. So love yourselves. Do your best to maintain your balance. And when you lose it, accept responsibility and also accept with humor and gratitude that you are in a learning process and refrain from indulging in self-criticism. It is public enemy number one for you. There are no negative effects that you will experience from the ascended beings or from the Creator for your own mm, little uh, misdemeanors. Your misdemeanors are forgiven instantaneously. It is you who do not forgive yourselves and make more of them. For us, all we are concerned about is whether or not your bulb is glowing. We don't care what reasons you might have for mm, staying in the dark. These are not important to us. We are here to tell you that you can stay in the light. It is potentially possible for you. And in fact, you are moving in that direction. There is no valid reason for you to not be glowing. Many excuses, but no valid reason. So forgive yourselves and love yourselves. Allow the process to unfold, but know that your goal is to attain to that balanced harmony. Know that is the point upon which the most experience is available to you. It is a point of detachment. It is a point of harmony. It is a point of surrender and acceptance simply opening to that which you are feeling in this moment is the most direct path towards balance. You have many criticisms and judgments about right and wrong and what are positive experiences and negative experiences. But if you can simply open to the presence of your own breath and the presence of what you are experiencing in the moment, this acts as that beautiful sword which will cut through all the apparent uh, illusions and assist you back into that experience of the balance. So it all starts in the moment. In being who you are in the moment, in not trying to attain something that you are imagining you should attain or mm, escape from some sort of experience that you feel is bad or wrong or inappropriate. It is time to be a little bit more simple, honest and direct. Your creator
creator or, and your guides know everything about you already. You have no way of fooling us, you see. You can only fool yourselves or those others around you, perhaps. But we know when you are glowing and when you are not glowing. When you are glowing, we give you more electricity. When you are not glowing, we have to give you a little bit less so we don't uh, damage your circuits. So if you are desiring more electricity, it is here for you and available to you. I suggest you practice your meditation regularly every day, once or twice, even better per day. These are my recommendations. Don't take these as orders from God. I am but one servant of God with my own observations and suggestions. If you wish to experience balance and harmony, it is beneficial to still your minds and to experience that within yourselves. And it is much easier to experience it in silence, in the peace of your own meditation space, than it is in the midst of chaos. So you begin to experience the balance in your meditation space. And you strengthen your experience of it, your understanding of it, your knowledge of how it works, your stillness of mind, your peace of mind. You enhance that by your meditation practice so that in your life you can go out and walk along the shore without getting yourselves wet. Without that practice, it will be more difficult, much more difficult for you to maintain the balance, especially in the days ahead. The days ahead will be filled with challenging experiences, uh, earth changes and clearings of all sorts. So practice now and build up your depth of experience so that you will be ready for all mm, experiences that come to you. So meditate. Do your best to be harmonious. Detach from your self-judgments and criticism. Enjoy this experience with a sense of humor and a sense of gratitude. You are not here to go crazy. You are here to enjoy yourselves while you are going crazy. And it can be done.